Hey, even Mo Norman couldn't feel what he actually did. In this video, we're gonna talk about the importance of the trail leg. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm gonna hit it well, I know I'm gonna play well, I know I'm gonna have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Hey, welcome to the channel today. Listen, uh, I'm gonna show you a quick clip of Mo talking about his right leg and then we're gonna come back and discuss what he's actually talking about. This stays right here, my shoulder. I never wanna move that. Uh, that's what Hogan and I do so well. This doesn't move. What moves? Shoulders and arms. Where you're, with your arms attached to it. Not your hips. Don't start getting like they want to say, hey, that's unnecessary movement. To hit a ball. Boy. Oh, that's great. Good move. Bring it here, you. Doesn't leave. Doesn't leave its angle. I'm never putting strain on my right leg. Yeah. Ever. Never putting strain on it. Never. <laughs> In the middle, zero. Boom. Now 150. Yeah. A little more turn, a little more extension. That's 150. He hit the middle, flipping zero. Now 200, a little more turn, a little more extension. Right through, right? Look, I'm going at the 200s. <laughs> <laughs> miss. miss is still going at the target. Here, here's right at the 200. Go hit the center row. Go hit right in the center row. Never left, no. never, never left the target. But I'm never hitting at the ball. Swinging. Swinging through the ball with my left hand. Left hand swing through the ball. So look, if you're new to the channel, um, this, this channel is all about the single plane swing and the swing of Mo Norman, who was the founder and the developer of what I know to be the easiest way to play the game. And how did he develop his golf swing? Well, if you look at the history of Mo, He's known as the best ball striker that's ever lived, and there's a reason for it. He swung the club on a single plane. Now, that's, it's really mechanically a common sense thing, but as we know, common sense is kind of a rare superpower these days. So having said that, let's talk about what Mo was doing. You know, here you have a guy who's the best ball striker in the world, and he's, people ask him all the time, and you saw that clinic, they discuss the things in his golf swing and he tries to answer those things. Well, in that clip you just saw, he's talking about the trail leg movement. And the trail leg movement is interesting because this one, one thing that I find very key to ball striking is how you use the trail side of the body. Now, what Mo is talking about there is he's saying the hip doesn't even move. And if you look at his swing, and you can look at this clip that I'm gonna show you here, in his backswing, the, the hips rotate. And in the downswing, the hips rotate. So there's, there's obviously hip movement in the swing motion of Mo and in the golf swing, which I think is very important. However, what Mo's talking about in that clip is the lateral movement of the hip. He doesn't want lateral movement. In other words, he doesn't want this movement of the hip. And so one of the things that I find extremely valuable in what Mo says there is how he's bracing on the leg and that bracing allows him to basically use that leg, it's bracing. And I talk about this a lot because it's on the inside of the leg, it's never on the outside of the leg. I don't think there's secrets to the golf swing, however, I think there's biomechanical frameworks to which the body functions the best. Working on the inside of that leg, and I'll hit one here to show you, I believe working on that leg in the backswing is a really integral part. It's a very important part of bracing and stabilizing because one of the things that I talk about a lot in the swing 
is stability. And so when you look at this and I brace against that leg, what's actually happening is you're stabilizing. Now, most set up pretty nicely there. You're stabilizing the hip. In other words, if I work on the inside of the leg, it's not allowing the, 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 the pelvis to shift over. Here we go again. So again, it's, it's bracing against the inside of that leg. And you know, you want power, right? And so it's a very powerful feeling. And here's the thing about it. One of the things that was important to me when I was doing a lot of biomechanical research and stuff that I was doing was not what was happening in the swing, but how was it happening in the swing? In other words, you know, if you look at a kinematic sequence chart, one of the most important movements of the swing is when you get to the top, that the pelvis is the first thing to move. In other words, you go from this side of the inside of the body to this side of the body, and then you can stabilize and then deliver the club with power and speed coming down. One of the things I see happen so often in, in swings of students that are struggling is they're not using the lower body correctly. And they're focused so much on rotation, but it's really not a rotational thing. It's a, st it's a stabilizing thing. So watch again when I'm set up here and I brace against that leg and I'm not locking it out. I'm just bracing against this so I can feel the pressure. And one of the things that, that I will recommend is weight shift I think is a really bad idea because weight shift, weight shift promotes the movement of weight from one foot to the other. I promote the rotational movement to the inside of the leg to the, uh, in a stabilizing fashion. So again, stabilize against the trail leg So you stabilize against the trail leg, boom, come down. Um, when, I'm, when I'm playing and I'm on the course, it's, I don't want to say I have swing thoughts because I, I don't like swing thoughts necessarily. I don't like movement of the club thoughts, put that way. But if I, I don't mind the thought of that feeling, like thinking about the weight going to the inside of that leg. Again, the bracing feeling never hurts me when I, when I feel that. So again, from a dress, from setup, brace against the leg. And it feels so good to be able to push from the inside of that. So the question I always had in biomechanics was, okay, the pelvis is moving first. Well, how is it moving first biomechanically? Because we can sit there all day long and say, hey, you need to move your pelvis first when you initiate your downswing. But what I'm going to tell you is that you, here's how you do it. There's two components to this. One is having the proper side bend. Number two is when you're against that leg, that you're side bent so that when you push, the first thing it moves is that. Let me show you what happens when you make a mistake. If you're here and see how that shifts this way, no matter when you push, see how my shoulder goes that way. So side bent component and then push component create the lower body pushing that way first. So again, you have to have side bend and then the push from the leg and that creates the lower body being in the first initial thing in the sequence. And it's powerful. I mean, that's the, that's the point is that it allows you to produce power because it sets the body up to sequence it correctly. Again, stabilizing against this, side bend, and coming down.
Now let's take a down the line look at this because I think knee flex is a bit of a component to this. I mean, I, I, what I definitely don't want to see is the leg locking out. You don't want the pelvis to be pushed back. You want to start the leg and stabilize the leg. It's really about stabilizing the leg. So a little knee flex is okay, but the key is, is stabilizing so the hip, the pelvis doesn't shift backwards. And so it really comes down again to bracing and just turning enough to keep that knee really like Mo talked about, he didn't like to feel the knee move that much. So that's what keeps it stable, is keeping that knee in position. Now let's do this with a driver and uh, see how it relates. I, um, I probably think you can see it easier with a driver just because um, because the stance is wider. And so now you see what I call the A-frame of the legs. A-frame being, you know, framing up this so that you're pivoting around the right hip. That's a lot what Mo was talking about. So again, pivot around that right hip. You can see you can really crank it. Obviously the problem is that when you shift, shift loses all that power. So again, just bracing around that leg. Best week of the day. So let's talk about, you know, with the driver, again, it's still bracing against that trail leg, but, you know, I don't necessarily want the legs bent. I don't want them locked out. I want you to stabilize against that trail knee. So you feel the bracing against it and it keeps the hip from shifting. That's the key. Brace and brace. Stabilizing the lower body. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this content. Again, we'll talk about more about Mo's feelings versus what he really did. Click the bell icon, give me a thumbs up. 
I'll see you in the next video. I believe that the single plane golf swing will simplify the golf game for a majority of golfers that play the game of golf. That means that more golfers are having fun playing golf. That's my mission. What I want to accomplish with that mission is I want every golfer that plays the game to number one, know who Mo Norman is, know that there's a single plane swing out there in the world. So I want every golfer in the world to know about this guy named Mo Norman and about an easier swing that exists out there. And the reason I want that is because there will be a day that conventional golfer where he is right now, that one day he will get frustrated with his, with his swing. He will get to the point of wanting to quit because the conventional golf swing is that hard. And whether it's now when he's 25 years old or when he's 65 years old, he's going to want to quit the game because he just can't do it anymore. And that's the day he's going to call Graves Golf and learn the single plane swing. I just want to make sure that everybody knows who Mo Norman is and that there's an easier way to play.